Gadoo 4.5 is out and as always this version is packed with a lot of new features and improvement. I'm going to share with you the most interesting features that caught my attention. There's going to be 2D, 3D, editor, GDScript and platform features. Lots of exciting stuff. Before we start I want to thank every contributors for their work. You're doing an amazing job and it's thanks to you Gadoo keeps growing. Let's start with a seemingly small fix, but a very important one. Resources duplication is now fixed. It was a bit buggy, or should I say unpredictable. So now the behavior should be consistent and work correctly with nested resources. This is an important one as many of us rely heavily on resources for custom data, but also for built-in Godot behaviors. I talked about this feature in my tools video. You can now run named editor scripts directly from the comment palette. This is incredibly useful to run one-time editor scripts without leaving the keyboard. You pop up the comment palette, type your script name and boom, it runs. This could be useful to populate scenes with predefined nodes, randomize positions or clean up your tree, for example. Check out the video to see how to make editor scripts. Another cool small feature is variant exporting. It allows you to export variants as a type. This then allows you to choose the type directly in the editor and then fill in the value you want. You'll recognize the type list UI is the same as the one you'd use on arrays and dictionaries when filling values in the editor. This provides more flexibility when exporting, so it's always great. There has been a lot of problems with gamepad support over the years and the team finally decided to integrate SDL3. This is good news and should provide much more stability. If you have gamepad related problems, definitely try Godot 4.5. Godot has a very good localization system, but it's hard to preview without running the game. Now you can simply select the language you want under View Preview Translation. Incredibly useful to make sure your UI behaves nicely with long ass words. Right, German? A new texture has dropped, DPI Texture, an auto-scalable texture that follows the font oversampling. This means you can put an SVG that will automatically be re-rasterized to a different resolution to match the font oversampling. This allows to have very crisp textures no matter the size of the UI and that is great. Godot is receiving a lot of performance improvements for the web, most notably using SIMD, Single Instruction Multiple Data, which is a form of parallel computing. You can learn more about it in the dedicated article, link in the description. This simply means you don't have to do anything and your game runs smoother on the web. It's incredibly important as the web is a huge platform that might become more and more prevalent. Even if you don't believe in that, it's essential to have a smooth web build to participate in game jams and to get your game played more easily. In the past years, Godot has made a lot of progress towards accessibility and inclusivity. Remember when it included full right-to-left support, which allowed support for Arabic, for example? Well, they now also support AccessKit, which enables screen reader. This is incredibly useful to help people with low vision or any disability which requires to read the screen aloud. Giving access to incredible tools like Godot to more people is always a good idea, so it's awesome to see features like these being implemented. If you want to test this feature, please give it a try and don't hesitate to share your feedback back. Cap A T T. There's a new container in town. Quick, come check it out. Foldable container is, well, a container which can fold on itself. You could do it before by having a label and the button and a container as a child, but it's now neatly implemented in one single node. Awesome for any games that display a lot of data on screen or even applications. Godot continues to be a very solid UI toolkit and it's only getting better. Spatial materials now support stencil and it comes with two built-in features, outline and x-ray. You can also do a custom shader to do all sorts of things. The PR shows some example, but you can also think of stencil shadows or the portal effect which is famously done using a stencil buffer where it's used as a mask. We're probably going to see more shaders using it in the future, so that's pretty exciting. Shader Baker. It sounds cool and it is cool. You now have the ability to compile the shaders at export time. This means you don't have to have stutters in your game when you show an object or particles for the first time. This also means you should be able to remove any shader caching hack you are using where you would show your object behind a loading screen to avoid stutters. This is huge news that will make Godot games much smoother. The disadvantage is that exports will take more time if you enable it, but it's very worth it when doing a release build. 
no longer need the viewport trick or to make a custom shader to display your hands, weapons, or objects when making an FPS. You can also prevent the clipping and override the FOV. When showing an object close to a camera, like hands or weapons in an FPS, the object gets distorted, especially with high FOV, and can clip into other objects. With this new feature built in the standard material, this is not a problem anymore. There were tricks to avoid that, such as using another camera or using a specific view modal shader, but it's now just built in. So freaking useful. A small quality of life feature but very welcome is based as unique. This allows you to copy and paste a resource while making it unique at the same time. No need to paste and then go make unique anymore or maybe you forget about it and then you change all of the collision resources. Those small features really add up and make Godot a great user experience. If you've worked with other people, you know the pain of sharing settings. It's now possible to override editor settings per project, which makes it possible to have a unified experience. This is super useful if you collaborate, but can also be great to separate some of your own projects. Abstract classes are now a thing. Using the at abstract annotation before a class, it marks it as abstract, which means it can't be instantiated directly. Basically, you have to create another class extending the abstract one in which you'll implement the actual behavior. This is useful to require a certain structure when you don't know what the implementation should be. If you like OOP or are making libraries, you'll probably love this feature. GDScript is becoming a more capable language with every update. I love it. Speaking of GDScript becoming a more capable language, you can now create functions with variable amount of arguments. You already saw that when using certain built-in Godot functions, but you couldn't do it in GDScript. This means you had to accept an array or a dictionary as a parameter. Now you can simply accept any amount of arguments as if the function was intended for that amount. This means you don't have to create multiple functions to have different parameters amount. Neat. These were my favorite features, but hold on, there's more. Let's quickly go over other features you might appreciate. This video was made possible by supporters on Patreon. Thanks to them for helping me. Head over to patreon.com if you want to support me and help me make more videos like these. MacOS get embedded game view, just like Windows and Linux. Useful for those tiny MacBook screens. Wink, wink. Apple users, another one for you. Vision OS is now supported. You can create Apple XR experiences for the, let me check, 10 Apple Vision Pro users worldwide. Let's go. Users, it's your turn. Wayland support made some great progress with native sub windows now supported. And Windows users, you also have a treat. RC Edit is not needed anymore, which means Godot can set the metadata and icon of your exe file at export out of the box. There's now an inline color picker when setting a color in GDScript. Awesome. Parentheses are finally not added when the parser is expecting a callable, such as when doing twin callback. Ah, thanks. Script members are now highlighted like native ones. This one will be confusing initially, but it's probably great in the long run. Stackable outlines for labels? Well, allow you to stack multiple outlines on labels. The advanced import settings dialog has been reworked a bit and now also includes the ability to attach scripts to node. You can now apply forces and impulses to Softbody 3D. It's a nice feature that should definitely be used for good, right? Android now has a touch action panel to help navigation on mobile device. Remember that in some countries, computers are very costly and mobile devices are much more common. So it makes a lot of sense to provide a good mobile editor experience. This adds to the accessibility of Godot we talked about earlier. I love seeing it. And that's it for my selection of Godot 4.5 features. You can read the blog post to see the full list, link in the description, and of course, give it a try and share with us your favorite features. Reminder that you can donate to Godot to support their work. And thanks again to the Godot core team and all the contributors for their work. I will see you in the next video, probably for Godot 4.6. Bye.